Hi everyone, bonjour à tous and welcome back to my channel. Today's video was requested by a lovely subscriber who needed guidance to make a bolster in order to practice yoga. So here we are! We will start by tracing a circle with a compass or with any other round object that has the desired diameter. For a standard bolster, it's usually around 24 cm. I am now going to trace the first side of a rectangle. Make it as long as you wish your bolster to be. The standard measurement is about 64 cm. The second side of the rectangle equals the perimeter of our circle. Quick reminder, the perimeter equals the diameter multiplied by p, in our example that's 24 times 3.14, which gives us 75.4 cm. Bravo! <laughs> Thanks to these two measurements, it's now possible to trace the whole rectangle before tracing another rectangle for the bolster's handle. The length equals the diameter of the circle and as for the width, it's up to you to decide and then multiply this number by 2. I went for 3.5 cm, so times 2, it's 7 cm. Of course, as usual, let's not forget to add our seam allowance all around the pieces. 1 cm will be plenty enough for this project. We will need to cut the circle 4 times, the big rectangle 2 times, and our small rectangle once only. You can now cut your pattern and lay it on the fabric using it as a guide to cut the fabric. You can also, like I am doing, tracing your pattern directly on the fabric. Also, you might have noticed from the presentation that I am creating a bolster half-sized. This way it's going to be easier to film. Oh, and don't throw away your scraps. They can be useful for a future project that requires stuffing. Voila! For the cover, I cut once the big rectangle, twice the circle and once the small rectangle for the handle. You will also need an invisible zipper slightly longer than the bolster's length so as to facilitate its insertion. And for the pillow itself, I cut once the big rectangle and twice the circle. First, we will need to fold our pillow fabric right sides together and make two marks spaced from a few centimeters on one side with tailored chalk. Then you can pin the fabric in place. We will make a row of straight stitches at 1 cm from the edge, making sure to leave an opening between the two marks. At the sewing machine, place your garment so as to have the needle at 1 cm from the edge of the fabric. You can find marks on the machine to guide you, or just make your own with a colored tape. Hold your threads and start sewing with a few back and forth stitches. Once you reach the first mark, make again a few back and forth stitches, lift your presser foot and move the fabric so as to position it at the second mark. You can then go on sewing. So we have left a small opening that will allow us to turn the fabric inside out. I will now fold my seam on one side and press it. Don't press it open if, like me, you plan on using spelt holes to fill in the pillow. It might stick out between the stitches. We need to place four marks at equal distance on each side. The first mark is the seam and we'll find the second by folding the fabric and pinning the fold. Now, 
I open my fabric and fold it again, making sure to align the two first marks on top of each other. Place the other two pins on the newly created creases. Here are my four marks. Repeat the same operation on the other side and for both circles as well. If you'd rather, you can use Taylor's chalk instead of pins. When it's done, the goal is to pin the pieces right sides together, a circle on each side of our tube, using the marks as guides. Also, to have a really neat and clean circle shape on both sides of the pillow, I'll add plenty of extra pins. Then it's time to sew the sides with straight stitches, again at 1 cm from the edge. Take the pins out as you go, right before they go under the presser foot. This way you will prevent shifts between both layers of fabric. Now trim the excess fabric at about 5 mm from the seam and finish the edges off with a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. I'm about to arrive where I started sewing. I cut first the threads to have them out of the way. Then I'll go on sewing on top of the beginning for about 2 cm. When you are done, switch to straight stitches and go back and forth a little to secure everything in place. The pillow is done, we can turn it inside out thanks to the little opening we left. Also, thanks to this opening as well, it will be possible to force feed the little guy, giving him a plump and well-rounded shape. It will be ideal, dear yogis, for restorative poses. I decided to fit my pillow organic spelt heels. It's natural, it smells great and it's quite dense without being too heavy at the same time. And also, what a delight to plunge your hands into it. I am going to use the circle pattern to make a funnel which will allow us to easily fill our pillow. Once the pillow is full, and don't hesitate to force fit it heartily, we will close the opening with a few invisible hand stitches. In the future, it will be easy to unstitch them, should you need to regarnish the pillow after having used it many times. I make two knot stitches to secure my sewing, then I just stick the needle in the knot and take it out at about 1 cm before cutting the thread. Manipulate the fabric so as to fold the seam allowance back on one side and the pillow is done. Don't forget to drink water, we are now going to work on the pillow cover. So first and foremost, inserting the invisible zipper. The right side of the fabric is facing us and we are going to trace a line at 1 cm from the edge on both sides. I open my zipper and place it right side facing the fabric. The teeth must be perfectly aligned on top of the line. Now I recommend you pin it first in place and then baste it so we won't be annoyed by the pins while sewing. Don't skip this step, it will make the bolster cover look way nicer. And you know, don't crumble either. Quick and large stitches will do the trick nicely, I promise.
At the end, just make a few back stitches to secure the basting and I will now close the zipper before laying it on the other side of the fabric. Pin it at one place just to level up the zipper and avoid shiftings. Then you can reopen it, pin it and baste it. When sewing an invisible zipper, we need to unfold it completely and stitch on the little crease that appears. So first option, the invisible zipper foot. It has two little grooves in which we insert the teeth of the zipper. The presser foot then opens the fabric and the needle stitches right on the crease. Now that is a very useful tool and I highly recommend you having one that works with your own sewing machine. I believe there are universal fit as well and I'll try to put a link in the description box if you are interested. Second option, the narrow presser foot that comes with almost every single sewing machine. It's a little less convenient but it works fine and allows you to sew as close as possible from the teeth. So here is the invisible presser foot working like a breeze on my machine. When you know how to use it, trust me, it is a pure delight. <laughs> and here is the narrow presser foot that works perfectly fine as well, but requires a bit more focus and precision, qualities that none of the lovely subscribers of this channel are lacking anyway. Alright, the zipper is inserted, you can now remove the basting thread and trim the excess fabric on the edges of the zipper. To prevent fraying, we are now going to make a little zigzag stitch that will maintain both the fabric and the zipper tight as lovers. If the head of the zipper is on your way while sewing, lift the presser foot up and zip it away on the other side. And voila! It's quite nice to look at, I find. What a pity that no one in your yoga studio will suspect how delicate and nicely finished the inside of your bolster is. Before pinning the side circles on each side of the pillow cover, we are going to prepare the small handle. I fold it right sides together lengthwise, pin it and stitch at 1cm from the edge. When you are done, we just have to turn it inside out, to press it flat and, if you wish, to make a little top stitching at 1mm from the edge on both sides. Now place it on one circle and baste it at about 5mm from the edge. Like we did before, we are going to place some marks with pins and construct the pillow right sides together. Before constructing the second side, don't forget to open the zipper slightly. Then, same story, we will sew at 1cm from the edge. Trim the excess fabric at 5mm from the seam and finish it off with a zigzag stitch to prevent fraying. We are almost there, I am just going to insert my hand inside the cover to open the zipper completely and turn everything inside out before placing the pillow where it belongs. And voila, c'est terminé! Congratulations! Also, a big thank you for your presence, your kind messages that I always read with interest and gratitude. Bye bye! A bientôt